Good morning, YouTube -less. EXO coming at you here with the third installment, well, kind of like a whole different part of the installment of our Amp Lab install. We've uh, just mocked up our amplifiers in the last video. That's how we, ooh, that's how we ended the last video. But just underneath me, there's a little hidden goodie. I went on Amazon and we're gonna utilize this little bad boy just underneath our seats on both sides. There's an AC outlet or a heater outlet. We're gonna put some Gorilla Tape around this and I ordered some hosing about this this thick. Hopefully we're going to have a run on both sides of the vehicle. We might test it out and see if, if it works better with two on one side or two on the other. Because unfortunately our muffler is like right next to the amplifier. It's going to be generating tons of heat before we even turn our amps on. So hopefully this little trick right here will help eliminate a little bit of that heat. That was actually the only reason why we added this second skin. We didn't have any trunk rattle, but this stuff acts as insulation as well. Automotive insulation. Wow, the sizing couldn't have worked out better, guys. We've got the little pipe right here, the little plastic corrugated plastic pipe, nothing fancy. In fact, I got this on sale for like, I don't know, 10 bucks for 20 feet. See how there's a solid piece in between here? I'm gonna cut that out with this knife. That way we can get an even bigger, well, not bigger, but a tighter fit around this pop up. Now this thing fits on even better than it did before. I don't even have to freaking mess with it now. Check it out. Bam! A little bit of Gorilla Tape and she'll be good to go. First tube is all piped in and taped up with the Gorilla, but there's also the other end that we need to kind of worry about. So to increase the CFM of that one tube, we need to close off the other tube. We're just gonna put a little bit on the edge and stick this right on top of it. You know, I was gonna go ahead and stick a whole bunch of silicone in there, but I don't want my whole car to smell like vinegar. I don't know if you ever worked with silicone, but 100% kind of smells a little bit like vinegar and makes your nose sting. B2 dot RJ dot dot, dot come. She may be messy, but she's definitely all sealed up now. And we got the tubing uh, coming out the door, ready for us to plumb it through all the way back into the trunk. But before we do that, we need to bring back the stars of the show, our blower fans that we already unboxed, look, what, like almost a year ago now, but they're finally going in. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at them. Right here, you remember these bad boys? I'll go ahead and link the video that we've already done on them. So I'm not gonna go through a whole bunch of it, but it's basically a fan that's 240 or 270 CFM, cubic feet per minute. So we're gonna link these up somehow back here in the trunk. There's our muff daddy. Good old fucking exhaust system making everything nice and crisp back here. So if we can keep this elevated just a tiny little bit, something to keep it off the um, ground of the floor and then have a little square around it so we can mount another one right on top. So there's gonna be four of them all together with two AC lines coming through on both sides. And because a huge problem with this car was leakage. I'm not gonna plumb through an exhaust system. There's an existing hole right here that I've already entertained the idea of possibly plumbing through that, but I'm not gonna do it because so much water ends up in the trunk with that little hole even t a tiny bit exposed. So we're gonna keep everything nice and sealed in the trunk and do uh, just two runs of AC on both sides and hopefully it'll just shove enough cold air back there to keep everything maintained fairly well. One of the best things about working when someone else is with you, you get new ideas 
from their input. We got Kyle. Can't even talk right now. Basically, I took off what I just did because we are going to paint it. I didn't even think about painting this, but Kyle was like, hey, it would look good if this was orange and this was black. I, I planned on making this black anyhow. So if that's painted, we might as well match it up with the heat sinks with orange. So let's go ahead and uh, do that, but we'll wait until the end of the day so we don't have to, you know, totally schedule everything around that. So we'll move into something else. Like we explained in our last video, we really wanted to make these wires pop. So to give it that extra clean look, we just drilled through our false floor so the wires can meet up right with our bus bars. Sometimes the littlest things can make the biggest aesthetic difference. Sometimes it can be a little tricky figuring out how much to space out your carpeted holes from your copper holes. We wanted it short enough to have a nice tight radius into the floor, but long enough to at least have a good chunk of the wire exposed for the feature that we're trying to go for. As long as we can avoid having a big wire monster underneath, that's good in our book. With our platform pretty much ready to go, we can switch gears into our AGM batteries. When removing the hardware for the batteries, we noticed something a little inconvenient, but we knew what to expect. Since we made our own custom battery terminals with nice thick copper, it ate up all of our threads. That shit definitely ain't gonna hold. So we did a little bit of searching around and found a slightly bigger sets of hardware that fit in just perfectly if we decide to stack a couple lugs on top of it too. Right, the silicone is just about dry here, so that's why we've got the first side all plumbed through. So I figured I'd show you just what I did. It's pretty much self-explanatory though, guys. All I did was shove this thing right in the hole and just kept going to town and just shoved it right through. Just something like this, and there she is. And it's just about perfect on this side. Look, I'll zip tie it up around here and it will plumb right in to where our fans will be pushing along our amplifiers, nice cold air conditioning. I remember growing up in grade school and they always said, keep it simple. So that's what we're gonna do with this right here. I'm not gonna overcomplicate things like I sometimes do. We're gonna use these little tiny brackets right here, just flat little things with some nuts and bolts and hopefully find something just about the right size to mount to the floor with it. And then we're gonna be able to do a double fucking mount with something simple like this. Ah, paint, paint, paint. We freaking laced this bad boy right up because it was porous. We didn't even bother priming it with kills. I'm not really looking to spend that much time on her. She's gonna be slightly hidden anyways, but that fan fits right in between her like a fucking, oh, she's perfect. So now you can see on the idea, a little bit easier to explain because you can see it. We're gonna mount the top fan, boom. Got her secured up on the top, and you can get now, this thing's gonna be plumbing, literally, right into our fans that are gonna be blowing across the heat sinks, hopefully keeping things a little bit cooler. Oh boy, I am so glad I took Kyle's advice. So, there she is, guys. We got Kyle, we got Kevin, and we got EXO getting shit done. The sun's going down though, so we're gonna have to maybe call it a day here in about a half hour. So, what do you think, guys? She's definitely gonna look the part. Ooh.